Rebecca, welcome to the show, Jesse Ray Growth House Podcast. I'm honored and excited to talk to you today. I am so excited to be here, and I feel like the name of your podcast and your brand, Growth House, is literally like describes the house that I live in. I love the background. We were just talking about that. You had that background even before COVID. I did. I, I mean, I started designing this house eight years before we moved in. So you want to talk about you know, being a visionary and being willing to like do the long work to get to the vision. This house was an exercise in patience. I love it. So I was doing some background research. Obviously we got connected through a good friend, Joel, shout out Joel. Um, you've done so many things like TEDx speaker, best-selling author. I don't even know, but you have a background in real estate. You crushed real estate and then got out and helping women with so many different things. You got pitch club, you have amazing podcasts. I don't know if you're still doing it, but I was in there like today, just listening to a bunch of episodes. So yeah. if someone asked you, who is Rebecca, what would you say? I would say Rebecca is a multi-passionate visionary and how-to girl for other female visionaries or multi-passionate women. I am working on being the be-it-all woman, not the do-it-all woman. Um, but I am someone who has given myself permission to evolve and to also follow what excites me because that's where, that's where our real, like not just charisma, but like our real drive to create something incredible is, is not the things that we ought to do or a good idea, but the things that we're called towards. I love that. So before we jump into like kind of your story, I want to know currently, what are you most excited about? What projects are you working on? Where are you at in life right now? Oh my goodness. Try to think of what I can actually share. I just filmed a documentary on Saturday, but I can't, that will be out this fall. What? And I can't say anything else than that, but it will be on a major network. We can't get uh, a little growth house exclusive call. Give me a little, right. bit, a little bit. That's right. Yes. And I, that's all I can share because I'm pretty sure that it's somewhere covered in my NDA. I am really excited because I have, I mean, I, I have a background, you know, in real estate, I have a long background in real estate, two decades. And then I have been in the, I would say the online, you know, the coaching strategy space for a decade. And I love both of those. And I'm launching a CPG company with two co-founders in the fall, Consumer Product Good. For Now that I know the acronym, I had to look it up the first time I heard it. I was like, what is that? Um, and it is a lifestyle company, so clean beauty and supplements that is a for-purpose, for-profit company. And I am really excited to have a physical product that is is really about like an evolved way of doing business. I know that you and I are very aligned on this. It isn't just about, you know, for example, clean beauty. It isn't just about making it sustainable. It isn't just about the fact that it's women owned. It is about having a culture of doing things in an evolved, conscious, sustainable way. And that is where business is moving because the way that traditional business has been done, I think people are seeing and feeling that very much of it doesn't work anymore. Has, hence the mass exodus from corporate and, you know, entrepreneurs like us out there sharing a different message. So let's walk through. You were in corporate doing real estate. And then how'd you branch out and decide to get into more of the online space? Well, before I was in corporate, my, my dream was to be a writer. I have always loved storytelling and writing and, and um, I'm an Enneagram seven for those of you out there that love Enneagram, but that means in my, which is the, the visionary. But in my healthy, when I'm in health, I go into what's called the five cave. It's the investigator. So I love to like understand something and research it and then create something around a, a need or a, you know, a problem. So I worked at a, as a daily, as an editor at a daily paper for a couple of years as a writer and did some really cool things and won some journalistic awards and did some in-depth pieces that, you know, changed policy. And then I realized that to pursue that career, I was going to need a bartending job to support my journalism habit. So I ended up having an opportunity. And that's, that's what has usually happened is just an opportunity arose. Um, and I've been very fortunate in my life to have the discernment to typically follow the good opportunities that I've learned some lessons. Some, I call, actually, I don't call it the good and the bad. I call it the good and the growth, which is when like things are challenging. Um, but I got into real estate working for you're in Arizona. So working for um, major developers, Pulte, Dell Webb, Taylor Morrison, which I'm sure you've seen all their signs. Um, when I was 23, and by the way, this was 2003 in Las Vegas. So anyone old enough to remember what happened in 2008, I worked my butt off. I made more than a million dollars in my first couple of years 
was the top salesperson in the nation and then watched everything crumble. And it was like monopoly money. And I am just very grateful. I realized at 28 in my profession that I could make a lot of money and I could also lose a lot of money. And the only thing I took with me was the experience of, of I mean, really is, is the lived experience. Unfortunately, all my assets were uh, <laughs> disappeared in that, in that recession. Oh man. And then after that in Vegas doing, you know, going through that real estate and then what happened after that? What that did is I, I would love to say like I jumped into entrepreneurship. I did not even understand entrepreneurship at the time. My, my parents actually are both entrepreneurs and I wanted nothing to do with it because they, my dad's a fisherman, my stepdad's a water well driller. So they're entrepreneurs, business owners that their livelihood and their you know stability is controlled by seasons and regulation. And you know I was like, that is not for me. Not at all. Um, and then I, I shortly after kind of losing everything in the recession and, and going through just a lot of challenges in every area, personally, professionally, in my health, um, it was 2009, 2010, I was dating a wonderful young man. And a few months into dating, he got diagnosed with stage four cancer. The next year, um, watching him fight that battle that he ended up losing, it, it was even a bigger lesson than obviously than losing like all of my physical assets because what I really saw is you take nothing with you except your experience, your relationships. And I vowed to myself, I was like, something's got to change because that same year I remember going to the ER thinking I was having a heart attack. It was an anxiety attack, but it was related yes to my personal life, but also I was under massive pressure professionally and I wasn't in a position then, or at least I didn't think I was to dig myself out because I didn't understand this tool called entrepreneurship. And I was like, well, another job is going to be just as hard. And it's just, at least this is a known entity, right? And I know what I'm getting into. I don't want to get into something else that could possibly be worse. So my gateway drug into entrepreneurship, like many people's 14 years ago, was an accidental venture into network marketing. Yep. I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's so many stories, right? Yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and MLM, I feel like is like the go-to gateway drug. Yes. It's entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. So ironically, I was, I was, you know, all the, all the stress, the working crazy hours, 80 hours a week, all nighters, like it did two things. I put on 10 to 15 pounds I didn't want and I was stressed. And so I was looking for some, you know, I was like, like, what can I do to lose weight and feel good? And I found some health products, didn't understand network marketing. Um, a couple months later had an amazing transformation. I am, I, and again, this is something I think most entrepreneurs are, is we're, we tend to be the types of people that want to share what's working. And when people ask us, we're like, let me give you whatever you need right? Especially if you're in the coaching space. Um, and I shared it, made some money, had no idea how it worked. And then I was like, wait a second, I made a couple thousand dollars from sharing something like, okay. And what that did, that wasn't my be all end all, but what it did is it, it helped me think differently. It helped me realize that I had built relationship equity for years. And also that I could leverage the same skills that I'd learned in, you know, a decade plus of, of selling and managing more than a billion dollars of real estate. And I could leverage that to other things as long as I believed in them. And I believed in those products. Um, and I did that for a couple of years. And what I found is I was ultimately utilizing my background in sales and marketing and, you know, and, in, and team building and growth to work within my network marketing business. So I, you know, went, I was in the top 2% of earners pretty fast there. But what I didn't love about it is I love creating. I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like I don't want someone telling me what I can and can't do. I left corporate for that. And so while I'm so grateful for that because it was training grounds with very little skin in the game, um, it, what I ultimately realized is like, I really want to create my own thing. Like I want to be the designer and actually in my corporate job, I got to be, I was the one that got to go out and find, you know, not always find land, but I got to help develop products and sales plans and buyer personas and all these things that felt really creative, even though 90% of the job was killing me. Uh, the 10% was really fun. And so I launched, um, I launched my coaching business back in probably 2015 and like many coaches, and I wish I would have had me as a mentor then I did just okay the first few years. And when my son was born in 2016, I was like, okay, now every hour, I mean, I was a full-time mom, full-time business owner and full-time lunatic for the first year. I mean, literally I love the description. <laughs> Def that's the first time I've ever said that. I was like, definition of insanity, do not try to do both because oh some people give up. But what I realized is I'm like, I'm, I have X amount of time with my child. 
and I want to spend it. And yes, you can like work in the pockets, but that's a little hard if you're scheduling client calls. And what I decide is I'm like, if I'm paying for someone to take care of him and not just that to be away from him, I want to make sure that it's the highest use of my time. And I didn't feel like things were moving quickly enough. I wasn't totally working with clients in my zone of genius. I could not say at that time that I loved all my clients. I absolutely can say that now. And I was looking at like, how do I up level? How do I get more well-known? And I knew that I had a lot of, I had a lot of great t- skill. And I think anybody that's in the coaching, if, if you are in your niche, you are here, but I didn't know how to communicate it to people. And I felt like I was his best kept secret. So at the time I remember my background's in journalism, but I was a reporter and I'm like, you know, I used to get these press releases on my fax machine and on a slow news day, I would be like, okay, this is interesting. Let's, you know, call up and and do a little research on this. And so I was like, well, maybe I need PR because that would help me get out there. And I would feel like an expert. I would be seen as an expert. I knew some of it was optical, but let's be real. Like sometimes, unfortunately, vanity metrics matter. You know, I, I knew I was meant to impact more people than I was getting in front of. So I reached out and a couple of PR firms that I talked to, they wanted to charge me like 5,000 a month. And when you're making, and by the way, six month contract. And when you're making, you know, I mean, listen, I was making good money. I was doing 150 to 200,000, but to spend $30,000 of your income for something that they cannot guarantee results. I was like, well, wait a second. I know you're telling me visibility is important and I agree. And my background is sales and marketing. So what is this driving towards? What are my key performance indicators? What's going to happen? And they couldn't answer that. And so I said, okay, I'm not going to spend that money. But what I did know is I wanted to be seen as an expert. And what I proceeded to do in the next year is is take my background in journalism and and reach out to a few friends that knew a little bit about PR and kind of piecemeal some things together. And by the end of that 12 months, dedicating about one hour a week towards failing forwards, I had been mentioned, featured, or interviewed in more than 20 national publications. Wow. As a business coach... As a business coach, like I mean, I, I was certified in both business and um, and wellness, so it kind of depended on the publication. One thing I will tell for everyone listening is don't pitch for things you don't want to be known for, because I was in this article about why pizza can be healthier than breakfast foods, and it went viral, and I think like hundreds of publications picked it up. So for a while, if you Googled me, that's the only thing that came up. So, you know, think about what do you want to be known for and only contribute your your thoughts, your, you know, your opinions on that. Um, fortunately it's now gone. The SEO has died, but what happened when I got visible, you know, and, and right now we're, we're recording in March, it's women's history month. And it's like when I made history, right. I didn't become a better coach, but having a third party, an expert platform validate me as an expert. It's, it's kind of like if you watch the wizard of Oz and Glenda the Good Witch tells Dorothy, Dorothy, you've had the power all along. All you had to do is, you know, click your slippers together three times. It gave me an energetically different feeling. And I'm a big proponent of like, we attract, you know, whether it's the type of clients, the pricing, you know, the the problems, what we are in energetic alignment for or an energetic match for. And it increased my energetics because I felt more confident. I felt more sure of myself. And optically what it did is it, it, people looked at me differently. They're like, oh, wow. You've been in U.S. News and Forbes and Women's Health and like all of these massive publications and they're calling you an expert. You must be. Again, a lot of it is optical, but it it changed the way I looked at myself and it changed the way that people looked at me on the outside. And uh, what started to happen as I raised my rates, I started getting more opportunities. I started getting podcasts back before podcasts were really a big thing. I started speaking on stages and it completely transformed my business. And what started to happen is my business clients were like, how are you getting this? And I would say, it's not duplicatable. I can't teach you. Like, it's just this weird little method I put together. And like, you know, cause I, I bootstrapped it and, and I had, didn't spend any money doing this. And I didn't know if I could get them results. Well, I had a couple of clients that were like, can you just show us? And so I took, and these are back the days I did one-on-one. I took them through it and guess what happened? They got results. Not only did they get results, they got better results because they started from where I was. They didn't start from where I started failing forward. So one of my first clients, who ironically was my old national VP of sales when I was at the builder, she, I think her first 90 days, she got like five paid speaking engagements, Forbes, Today, 
um, she like was massively successful in it. I went, okay, this just works. And I began to teach visibility of how to become a money-making media magnet of how to get on podcasts and be a profitable podcast guest. Like all of these things that I had done because they felt fun and they felt in alignment. Uh, but I always looked at how can I, how can I use this to move the needle? How can I use this as an actual strategy? And by the way, yes, it is a strategy, but what business owner does not get excited to talk about their business, to teach the things that they've created, like says no business owner ever not. Right. So I just looked at what do people already love doing and how can we utilize or harness these things as ways to grow your business? Because if you love doing it and it brings the result, you're going to keep doing it. And there's a lot of strategies out there that we tactilely know can work, but if we are not in alignment or we're not excited, we're not even going to do it. And even if we do that energy of it being something that we resist is going to show up. Mm, so true. And then the clients that you work with currently, so are these women who are small business owners? Are these women who, because it sounds like your your last person you just mentioned that you got amazing results for, she was a VP of a company. So this also works for people like in corporate America that have, you know, I guess, executive level status and part of the team. So that's the interesting thing. So while I primarily work with, um, I primarily work with business owners, you know, CEOs, and, and yes, women, I mean, we were introduced ironically through a male client that once in a while I'll do like a little side thing for a male. I mean, if I really feel like I'm like, oh, they're my type of person. Um, but I do have a really heart and soul to help women because I want women to be seen and heard and valued. And the, just the way the world works, that is as a woman, a different game than a man. It, it is. Um, so, so yes, I want everyone, I want to help everyone, but like I specifically, like everything I do is, is centered with women. That does not mean the strategies don't work for men. And that's why we met, you know, through Joel. Um, so primarily it is business owners. However, what I have worked with is a lot of executives or, you know, highly driven, successful people in corporate who are either going out on their own or they're building a personal brand. And that client, the interesting thing is she, she had started a nonprofit. She was doing some coaching on the side. She really, though, she wanted to build a personal brand and what that allowed to do in the industry is she was she was um, applying to speak at, it was a builder conference, like the number one builder conference year after year, never even got like a response. And then we worked together and that year they reached out to her and asked her to speak at it. The next year she keynoted it and closed it out. Now, why is that important? She also was able to go back and the next corporate job she got the base was $100,000 more than she had ever made because if you Google her, it shows her in massive publications. It shows her on stages, right? And so when you think about how are we perceived as valuable in the world, again, innately, there is no difference. But when you have impacted more people and you can do that through your voice, your message, right, your story, when you have done that and you've been on bigger platforms, you tend to be compensated in a bigger way. So I'm curious because our audience is a lot of people that are in corporate looking to start their coaching business or, you know, personal training business and scale that. So for those types of people, for me, I thought I was going to take my, you know, one of the top salespeople success in corporate America and just walk into entrepreneurship. Like, you know, I already did this. This is going to be easy for me, but it wasn't. I was like, damn, I got to like relearn a bunch of new skill sets. I'm curious, what do most people struggle with that you see transitioning from that corporate mindset that job into starting their own business? Well, I'll tell you the benefits of coming out of corporate is you're typically really organized. You are typically action oriented. You learn, you take direction. The, the, the drawbacks is number one is you're used to being told what to do. So you absolutely need a coach or a mentor, right? Ideally find someone that is multiple steps ahead of you. Find someone that has either has the business that you want right? Or some type of model, or they have coached people like that. I think people can get really excited by bright, flat, shiny, flashy objects, but like you need to actually ask them like, who have you worked with like me and have you got them results? And that's not just for coaches. That's if you're working with someone in social media, like anyone you're paying, you want to make sure, do they really understand your goals, your desires, your talents, your wishes? And can they support you in a way that I can't say success is ever a given, but if you do the work that they're asking you to do, will you get a result? The other 
The other biggest drawback I see in corporate is people have not spent time building personal brands. So it means that they have no audience and they have no brand. And that is a huge deterrent because I've seen people wildly talented coming out of corporate and they don't have those things and it makes everything so much slower. Now they may have the income to be able to pay for the fast track. And that's what I did, right? Cause just like building a house, you, you have three choices. You can get something fast, quality or cheap, pick two. And so I chose, I was like, well, I want to do this fast. I mean, even though I didn't pay for PR, I paid for great coaches. I paid for great website designers. Like I paid for the things I knew were important. Um, and that's why I know you have a mastermind. I have a mastermind. I'm a big fan of masterminds because even if you're an, inc- you have an incredible coach and they love you, that you're their favorite client and they want to support you in every way at best, they might have 10 to 20 good introductions in them. But if you're in a mastermind of 15 to 20 other incredible people who each have 15 to 20 introductions, you massively open up your network and your ability to impact. So true. And so good. I couldn't have said it better. So I'm curious, when should someone really start investing into looking into getting like in front of media, podcasts, publications? Because I know there's like a, for me, there was like a confidence barrier where I go from corporate and now I'm changing my identity to I'm this person who helps other people get away from corporate America by real estate or by starting their own business. And so for someone in that transition and they're like, I don't, I don't know, is it worth me spending time and investment or hiring someone as a coach to help me with this stuff? When should someone start looking at this? Before you need to, you should look at it. However, I am going to say, and not that PR agencies are bad again, because I teach people PR, right? I mean, I I should say I teach visibility strategies that actually lead to profit versus traditional PR. Um, you want to be thinking about, again, building that personal brand, what you need. And so if you're out there and you're thinking about, I mean, you, I, I have lots of lots of resources on my website. I have like a pitch template that is how to be in alignment when pitching, whether it's to TV, to media. But what you really need is to understand what is your end goal. So one of the first questions that I ask clients is, what is your end goal here? Is it... To, to create like a money-making machine in your business, like a high cash machine that you're going to invest into other things? Is it to build something that you ultimately sell? Is it to build something that you scale to a point where you can step back and be more of like, you know, a, a director, you can, you can be a consultant in it. Um, like what is your goal? Because that's going to change the way that you are going to take action forward. And that's first. And the second is like, how do you, like, what do you really want your day in your business to look like? Because a lot of times, like you said, people end up building jobs for themselves. And so those things are really important. Um, but here's the, 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 the big answer. Build an email list. I keep hearing this and I like, I'm like, I need to start doing this. Email list. Here's why. Is one, we don't own social media. And I've had clients that have 20,000 plus followers and their account gets hacked. They've lost everything. Right? I just had a friend who has a good size following. She was in the middle of a launch. She lost her account for 30 days. It got hacked. Right, So you don't own social media. Social media is a tool. It is not the tool. You could have, I mean, if you have a social media account of ideal followers, even ideal followers, only 3% are going to see your social media at any given time. Now, are there, there's algorithms and things. If you understand them, you can increase those. Sure. And they're constantly changing. So growing an email list is so important because your products, your services can change, but as long as your, your mission, your ethos of who you are, doesn't massively change, then you're going to be able to continue to nurture that list and to offer value to that list, to offer opportunities or containers to work with you, whatever that looks like. Um, but it's really, really important. And I will tell you, I remember in 2020 when, you know, again, I, I mean, I had a business, but it wasn't, I, I wasn't, it wasn't a seven figure business. And I can remember someone had seen a TEDx, my TEDx that I did in 2018. And they're like, hey, we'd love you to speak for the summit. There's like 200,000 people that will register for it. It's a massive opportunity. And I said, absolutely. I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, but this sounds amazing. And they said, we just require that you have an email list of at least 10,000 to promote to. And I was like, I don't even have an email list. So build the email list, even if you're in corporate. And now that doesn't have to be massively high tech. That can be as simple as sharing something on social, like 
my five habits to blank, my five tools to this, right? You, like when I was in corporate, I was known as being a resource provider. So one way that I could opt people in for whatever I'm passionate about is to share something of value and just do a poll like, hey, do you want this? And just ask them, hey, what's your email address? I can send it your way. Mm. You can actually start this out manually. Now it's going to take a little bit more time. But if the idea of like building out a funnel or that is like, is really terrifying, then just start building your list. The other thing most people don't know, if you're using Calendly, and I know you are, right? Or Acuity Uh-oh. or whatever. Am I going to get those, called out? <laughs> you're, you, I'm sure you're using something. No, no, no? I okay. am. I am. I thought I was about um, to switch it though. So I don't know if it was a bad thing. No, no. Calendly is the best, but you know, there's other, there's other software out there. I'm a Calendly fan. You can download your contact database of everyone who has ever opted in for a call for you, call with you. Now there you, you don't want to just spam them. You would, you know, and, and again, I'm not an email marketing expert, so please take this with a grain of salt, depending on the state you're in. But if you were to say, Hey, you know, listen, we connected forever ago. Here's, you know, here's what I, I'm kind of, when I say offering, don't sell to them, but like want to reconnect and maybe you offer them again, a, a something of value, a lead magnet, a freebie, a resource, et cetera. When I was like, oh, I need to build a lead, an email list. Well, I'd been in coaching for five years or six years. I had over 800 emails from people that I'd connected with on connect calls, coffee chats, consults, coaching, et cetera. Okay, I have a real life example that I kind of want to role play with you. Go for it. You down? Let's hot seat, laser session. All right. So let's just say it's one of my friends and they're creating their, what should we say? It's helping people with sales and they want to have this coaching company that helps people with sales. And right now they're all worked up on getting their domain, their website built, their, you know, all the legal stuff, they're hiring attorneys. I'm like, bro, you don't even know if there's a market, like obviously there's gonna be a market for this, but they're spending all this money and time before they have any audience, before they have anything set up. He's like, I'm designing this course. I'm like, for who? He's like, for these people. I'm like, do these people want that? And I've done the same thing. I had the whole thought process of, if I build it, they will come. And then I realized that's backwards. It absolutely is backwards. So Um, walk me through kind of that scenario. What's your thoughts there? Oh, I wish I would have known this when I, well, I, I learned it by doing it all wrong, which is what we typically do. Um, so absolutely you need to validate in the market and the market can change. Um, I'll give you the example when I, when I did, you know, PR for myself and I was like, oh, wow. Oh my goodness. I think I had a hundred thousand dollars of business coming this year from some of these visibility opportunities. Wait a second. This is fun. And it's, it's easy. And I started teaching my clients and they started getting the same results. I probably took 15-ish people through how to do this, right? So I had a pretty good, I had good case studies. And some of them I was um, working with, you know, over a six month period. Some of them I was working with, um, you know, over shorter term, but I had good case studies and I had a more or less a methodology. I had a process. So when I decided I would do a course, I knew that what I was teaching was vetted and proven by results that were not just my own. And that's really important because I think there's a lot of people that are trying to sell off their own results, but it's not as powerful if you can't duplicate those results in other people. It's not scalable if you can't duplicate it, right? Um, But here's the question I didn't ask myself is at that time, how do I want to work with people? So I built a course and this was back in 2020 when everyone was like, I'm going to make a million dollars doing digital, whatever. And listen, in 2020, people did. Um, And I started to deliver and I was like, wait a second. I miss the feedback mechanism. I want to see people get results. And I also know that depending on what the course is, something like 90% of people never even go past module one. So am I, do I, is my goal sales or is my goal results and impact? And so I decided to turn what was a course back in into a program, do it live. That turned into a mastermind. And so now I have, I do have some mini courses. I have a program and I have a mastermind and that's what's led to a, you know, multiple seven figures in sales. And the ironic thing is I still have permission to change. I still have permission to evolve. But if I was starting over, I would, whatever you're doing, you probably started it on yourself, your methodology real estate investing, short-term rentals, coaching, like health, right? You you were your own guinea pig. And then you probably helped a few other people. You need to get case studies. 
get testimonials from them. Don't ask them for a testimonial. Say, what was life like before? What do you now know is possible? What were your ahas? You know, ask them those types of questions and then grab that out because that's much more of a powerful testimonial than like, Rebecca was amazing to work with. You know, nobody wants that. They don't care. Um, and then I would say, what type of business do you want? Because if you love tech and never want to talk to people, developing a course and using mini chat and building out simple funnels is going to be great. And then you can, you can use social as a tool, but you can also grow your email list through podcasting, which is a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which a lot of my clients who aren't, they don't want to be on stages. They don't want to like do nine day workshops, right? Or even like, they don't even want to talk to anybody more than one person, but most people can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Right? Or you might say, I am an extrovert. I feed off the energy of other people. I absolutely want to have a program that's, you know, high touch, high impact where I'm working with people. And you want to do that until you either burn out or, you, or you'll keep doing it. I mean, you know, depends because everyone goes through evolutions. Just the biggest thing is understand that what you're doing, social proof it with the testimonials and the results because 92% of buyers are going to look at results, whether that's I mean, if you think about like what Yelp is, right? They want to look at what is it the experience of working with you like? What are the results I'm going to get? They almost don't even care how it's going to happen. They're like, what is going to happen, right? And and so that's where I would start. I would not build out a course. The only way I would build out a course is if you are, I should say, in the beginning, is if you find there's some low value things that you have to explain over and over. And so I have a lot of course backbones. So if I'm teaching visibility, then it might be like how to set up your helper reporter account. That can be a Loom video. I don't need to walk people through that over and over. Or how to set up your email signature so it doesn't have any attachments, so it doesn't get rejected by reporters. Like those are things I can have a video, but I won't, the, the, the things that I want to have action taken are probably going to be done in a different format. Because there's, there's three things, and I'd love to share this, for anyone listening, if you want to speak, if you want to be on a podcast, which by the way, are my favorite types of visibility, media looks good. I'm on national TV every month in an, with an audience of 40 million. I don't know that anyone has ever actually seen that show. I mean, I'm sure they do, but I, I've never had someone be like, I saw you on American Trends and I must work with you. You're so impressive being their national expert. I'm like, really? Um, but I've had a lot of people hear me on a podcast or see me on a mastermind. Um, so, so, so real quick, why do you think, I want you to dive into that because, yeah. okay, ladies and gentlemen, just first of all, thank you so much because you're actually giving some tangible action steps for this audience. So thank you for that. Why do you think those national publications where everyone's paying so much money to try to, you know, get on there, why do you think that didn't drive like, you know, clients or leads in the podcast did? Well, I will say, first of all, even though the, the, mark, the industry is changing a little bit, typically you should not be paying to get in publications. There's a difference between what's called paid media and earned media. And paid media is advertisements. Okay. So it's, it's doing an ad on a podcast versus being a guest on a podcast, mm -hmm. right? You earn media when you earn your thought leadership, which allows you to, you know, show up as the expert you are. Got it. Okay. Um, Okay, She's so, a mom of two, ladies and gentlemen. I know. My son is knocking on the window. He's like, he's got his baseball glove. I'm like, I'm like texting my nanny. Can you grab him? So sorry about that, about the background noise. My daughter is doing swim lessons outside my office window. And, you know, got a 14-week-old puppy running around. And, hey, this is real life. It's real life. And, by the way, you can do, you can build an incredible, aligned, profitable, enjoyable business with other things going on in your life, whether, you, you know, you have kids or not. So. I still own a real estate brokerage and I did a, um, I've, I've remodeled two homes since building my business so and built one. I mean, life is full. Um, but that's the thing about being an entrepreneur. We are kryptonite and our superpower is seeing the opportunity. Um, but here's what you just said. Um, thank you. First of all, I received that, that compliment and I want to share how I am very much about anti gatekeeping and I want every teacher professor, coach, speaker to learn this. I don't know where I learned it. And so I, I always believe in giving credit because it's free and it's worth everything, but I don't know where I got this from, but this is just how my brain looks at 
content, especially when you're teaching or educating. You need three things, right? You need three things anytime that you are teaching someone something. And so again, this can be in whatever form. This can be in a course. This can be in a keynote. This can be on a podcast. You need information, how to, right? Because how many times have we heard something and we're like, wow, that was really inspiring. And then we looked at our notes and we're like, I have no idea what to do with that information. I feel good, but, but you know, I could literally stub my toe and, be, and not feel that way anymore. So you need to give tangible how-to, tangible, right? And so I'm, I'm hoping that in this episode, and you can re-listen if you haven't think about it, you've been writing down like, hey, here's some to-dos or here's some to-avoids. And you've got some tactile things that if we never communicate again, if, if, I never, if you never come into my world and you remember my name, you will feel like I got some gems that made my life better, right? So information or how to. The second is inspiration. We need belief. And belief isn't just excitement. I am a pretty excitable person. You are too, you know. But the belief is also telling the stories. Yes, I did this. Yes, other people do this. Like me telling you, you don't have to go get another certification. You don't need another five years. You don't have to be at multiple six figures. In fact, some of my clients that have gotten the most press is because they don't have a booked out business. They're starting out. They have opinions. They have passions. They, they know what they want to talk about, but they actually have the time to build out the brand. And I'm like, great, good for you, right? So inspiration is really important because information alone is not going to activate people. You need both. You need the, this is what to do and here's how you can do it. And here's the feeling that's going to propel you. And then this is the third part. And this is key. And by the way, if you want to sell, this needs to be part of anything you're, when you're selling and teaching or teaching and selling, is you need to have some type of implementation or integration. So this is the activation, right? If you can give someone micro wins, and we're on a podcast here, so they're, whoever's listening, you are listening to it for free. If someone can give you a micro win, and maybe that's a realization, but maybe that's like a habit to change and you actually do the thing and you feel more confident, more clear, more healthy, wealthier, whatever that is that you've improved, you are so much more likely, not only are you going to improve your life, but you're so much more likely to want to go back and work with that person. So information, inspiration, implementation. So here's here. I mean, I'm, I am like pulling back the curtain. So if you were like, oh my gosh, I want to be in media like, and, and you are ready. You have to actually, you're, you don't feel ready. Jesse, I'm speaking to you, but everyone else listening, you may not feel ready. Guess what? You will never feel ready. Readiness happens by taking the action towards what you want. That is the initiation to readiness, right? You're never going to feel ready. In fact, you should do something every day that scares you. My, my husband sold his startup, um, a little over two years ago and it was, it was a life changing event. And when he sold it, I was like, honey, I got to watch you for four years build this. How the heck did you do it? Because he sold to John Deere for a quarter of a billion dollars. I mean, it was, it was a life-changing event. And, and it's a life-changing event that will create massive impact long after we're dead, hopefully. Um, and I asked him, I was like, how did you do it? And he goes, I did something every day that scared me. So just a little invitation. Are you doing things that scare you or stretch you every day? Um, but wrapping this all up, if you do all three of those, you are going to move people. And so do I want to sell courses and programs? Absolutely. But only because I am creating results that people can do over and over again on their own, not because I'm selling an idea or a promise that will never be actualized. So good. Do you have like five more minutes? Okay. Unless my kids bust in. Absolutely. Hey, that's totally fine. So you mentioned a couple of different like frameworks. And I want to dive into whatever you have time for. Yes. You mentioned the profit method and the overwhelm antidote. Is there either of those that you want to kind of talk about? I'm going to try to get through both of them in five minutes. I mean, I have like 10. Um, okay. So since we've been talking a lot about visibility, and by the way, everyone needs visibility, right? You actually need three things to be considered an expert, or I should say to be really embodying an expert. Visibility is new eyes on your business right? Now I am a big fan of creating incredible products and services that you have great retention. You have great ascension, right? We don't always want to be going out and getting new clients. We want clients to be bringing us referrals. And, and I, that's literally what I teach because that is sustainable regardless of social media platforms. 
but you need new eyes. How do you leverage other people's platforms? By giving value to get in front of new eyes. And this is without running ads. Ads are just a, a growth strategy. Number two is credibility. That is, are, can you do what you say you're going to do? And so you can show credibility in testimonials, a very clear niche, clear calls to action, you know, clear messaging. Those all create credibility. And so does press. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, I mean, unfortunately for me and what I teach, but logos on your websites do bring credibility. Again, doesn't make you better or worse. It just means that you're credible. And then the last is profit because we are in business for a purpose as entrepreneurs, but we're also in business for profit and we all deserve to be paid well and to be paid our value. So what the profit method is, is this is something that I use as a framework for speaking, for podcasting, um, really almost, you, you can really use it for just about anything. Um, I would call this, it's under the umbrella of being a good human being in business, which is like the first rule of business. So the P stands for pitch. I say that in the media, you aren't going to, you have to stop waiting for opportunities to fall on your lap. Now, when you start to put yourself out there, they will start to, right? But we have to pull ourselves up to the table, like grab our own seat. We have to raise our hand. Um, you can also just say P is put yourself out there. So be willing to ask for the things that you want. Be willing to pitch for them, okay? Be willing to share how you bring value and to ask for value back. The R though is relationship building. None of this works without relationship building. And we are in a, in a society in a time where people can be very transactional and you can feel that, right? Like business is an energy and you can feel when someone is looking at you as a number, when they are looking at your money as a dollar, right? You, you could tell the difference of someone who gets on is like, I want to pick your brain. How'd you do this? Versus like, I had a call today with this incredible woman. And, and the thing that I always ask on every call, and you can also borrow this from me, is what are you excited about right now? What are you working on? Where do you need support or help or a resource? And what would be a helpful introduction? So ask people that. And then by the way, also do the follow-up, which that's part of the profit method. But the P is put yourself out there a pitch. The R is relationship build. Like you actually have to build relationships. And quality over quantity. The O is your offer or your opt-in. So I don't mean like I would not be on this podcast. I would be completely out of integrity if I was like, and here's this that I sell and here's the price of this. And I was trying to close you. By the way, if you have a desire to be a podcast guest, you should never try to make an offer on someone else's platform ever, right? You are on, you're consuming on a free platform. And by the way, it's your, it's Jesse's platform, right? It's not my platform. So if I give you great value, then that's an invitation to go over to where I live on whatever my platforms are, my podcast, my social, and to go get value from me there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the offer or the opt-in should be something of incredible value. Okay. We can call it a lead magnet or a freebie. It should be something of incredible value. Or by the way, on a podcast, it's called a listener gift. Again, pulling back the I curtain. I didn't know this. Yeah, the listener <laughs> gift. I mean, I'm hoping that, that we're giving education. Um, and that listener gift should be something that goes towards the value you create. So example, one of my clients um, has birthing center. She's a midwife. And I'm like, okay, so you want it to be something that every ideal client of yours would want. Um, a health coach, it could be like a habit tracker. A midwife, it could be like list of healthy, amazing things you can still have during pregnancy, right? Um, so think about that. So for me, my listener gift that you can all go get on my website, Rebecca Cafiero, C A F I E R O dot com, is my irresistible four in one pitch template. And this pitch template that works for podcast, it's it's tweakable for podcast, TV, speaking engagements, and what's the fourth one? Thought leadership or like media. I have had more than 6,000 women use it to get tens of thousands of visibility opportunities. And by the way, when I said stats, that's called social proof. So that also is helpful, you know, is share the results. Um, but that's you the- said, You said women, men too? Can I, can yes, I you can go get it. it I should say, I should say 6,000 people. I'm sure there are some <laughs> men in there. Joel, our friend Joel is definitely one of those. Um, okay. But yes, any, any gender, mostly women have gotten it. I mean, so if you're a guy and you don't like pink, you know, that's just my brand. The F is for follow-up. And this is so important. So like I said, I was on this call today with this incredible woman. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I want you on my podcast. I would love to have you speak in my group. But I'd also, here's something that's that, by the way, that serves me. First, I was like, I have an introduction for you. 
I'm going to connect you to. So tomorrow I'll be cleaning up my follow-up for the week of anyone I've talked to. You can do it that day. You can do it that week, right? And I'll be making those introductions as I promised. The follow-up is important. And if you're pitching yourself, that follow-up could look like following up with a podcast host. That could mm-hmm. look like following up with a reporter. By the way, the follow-up should never be bumping this to the top of your inbox. I know you're busy. It should always be offering more value. Hey, Jesse. Oh my gosh, I know that you're so busy. I have something that I think you'd really love whenever you can you know, get up for a breath of air. Let me send you a breath work. Whenever you feel compelled, would love to know your thoughts. That is follow-up. The I is impact. And again, be a good human being. Nothing works if you're not creating impact. Like none of this works without it. It's a house of cards. So I shared earlier, if you want to create impact, especially if you're speaking, teaching, training, Or, I mean, you could be writing an email, but if you think about if I am communicating my value and my message to the world, how can I make sure that I have tactile how-to information? I give them inspiration, which could be belief, case studies, testimonials, examples, cheer them on. And then how do I give them some type of call to action to give them a micro win? That's the impact. The T is just track it because what you will see is if you begin to track this information, like I did not, by the way, I did not in 2017 when I started pitching myself to media. I did not think I would be on podcasts telling people how to do this. I started tracking. And I was like, Oh my goodness, that client came from a podcast. I didn't even know her. Oh my mm. goodness. And I mean, I had one client that came from a podcast, came to my event, like that, that client who, by the way, is a human being that I love and adore that I would pick up the phone for any time. But that client turned into was a $40,000 of revenue that year. And from a podcast, right? I, I think that when you, I know that when you begin to track, you are going to find that the things that light you up are the things that will attract your ideal clients and the things that feel fun. And so that's the profit method. And this can be done any, in any way that you're putting yourself out there where you're looking to gain visibility. I've already taken notes. I'm going to listen to this probably three or four times. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, I'm not even going to ask you cause I'm just going to link all your, you know, how to get to to your Instagram, et cetera, on the podcast show details. But there is one last thing. Growth House, we're very much a go-giving community. We are not going to reach out and like you just said, hey, can I pick your brain? And I'm going to steal what you just said and say, where do you need support or resources right now Mm. where we can reach out and provide value to you? That is such a good one, Jesse. I I learned from the best. Thank you. I'm, I'm really on a mission to, to show people there's an evolved way of doing business. And so while yes, in the pitch club, which is one of my businesses, it's really about elevating. I say healers. When I say healers, that doesn't mean that people have to be a a practical, a functional, you know, whatever, or even a coach. It's just anyone that is really on a purpose-driven path for business is a change maker to elevate their voices. So Mm -hmm. I, if you, if you are a woman out there that is like, I know that I have some magic within me and I absolutely deserve to be seen and heard and valued at a greater scale. Like come over get my pitch template pitch me Mm, i'll give you feedback like my email is you're going to get an email from me that delivers it you know just send me an email it's me answering them um or if you know a woman that is there that that deserves to step into the spotlight deserves to own her brilliance i would love to support her that would be it and the second is share this podcast right because Often we're like, oh, that's so good. I want to hang on to that, but you know, share it. Jesse is doing incredible things. He is elevating voices that deserve to be heard. And so share it, share, share you. I mean, I'm telling you, obviously you're already sharing it, but they should be sharing it. So if you're listening, you know, share it because there are so many good human beings in this world. And the way that we create more goodness and impact is by sharing and focusing on the positive, the positive news and not the negative news. So share it. Mic drop right there. Rebecca, we already went over. I appreciate you so much. You just have such a energetic energy. And every time I talk to you, like even if I'm feeling down, I'm just like, I'm, I want to go run through a wall right now. I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, Joel connected us. Likewise. So this is Jesse Ray, Growth House Podcast. We're out.